So Maxim is an engineer working for Vibe. His role is to bring technical touch to the business operations of company, creating processes, implementing automations, connecting tools, creating a data architecture, and facilitating the day-to-day -day operations for the employees. Maxim also partnered with ML School to teach other people how to create automation workflows with an attempt. Thanks for joining in, Maxim. Uh, over to you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. I'm super glad to be able to, to give you a little um, talk during this community meetup. So I'm just going to share my screen. Can everyone see my screen? Yep, perfect. Yep. So um, today I'm going to talk to you a bit about how we used NADN to connect our apps or our product um, to our everyday tools. Um, so just to give you a quick, a, a quick idea of what we do at Vibe. So Vibe is the web technology of visual support and knowledge management. Um, basically, we integrate video calls into everyday tools, uh, IBM Maximo, Salesforce, Zendesk, Microsoft Dynamics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what's the idea? Why do we do this? Because by replacing you know, radio and phone calls by video, um, we increase first call resolution rates, increase net promoter score, and decrease machine downtime, displacements, and CO2 emissions. So what was the challenge? So um, each one of our clients has their own Docker container on which they have their own web, which means that for each Docker container, we have um, a different database. And it's very complicated for us to access all of our databases um, without having to run through different logins and authentication. Um, and honestly, when I was talking with the tech team, uh, they weren't really glad with me uh, authenticating to Vibe through cloud platforms that we don't host ourselves. So um, what was the objective? Um, the, the, the objective, as I was saying earlier, was to connect um, so Vibe to, first of all, um, a Google BigQuery database on which we can, we can plug, for example, a Google Data Studio and better understand our user, uh, like user actions, user interactions. Um, be able to figure out you know, when a, a customer is likely to churn, how many calls, how many tickets, et cetera. And also to have you know, a duplicate of all the information that was in Vibe in our HubSpot, so our CRM, uh, most notably user lists, um, bad feedbacks for customer success, and tracking user onboarding. Um, so what was the solution that we decided to go with? It, it was webhooks. So basically, um, every time that uh, a notable event happens in Vibe, a webhook is sent to NADN. Um, and it then will, of course, uh, uh, work with this data and send it to BigQuery and depending on different cases to HubSpot. Um, so let me just uh, show you what it looks like. This is a pretty big one, so don't get scared. <laughs> uh, quite a few nodes. <laughs> yeah, I can see I can see Max cheering. Yeah, it's pretty huge. It's pretty huge. Um, but basically, we have one single point where all of our webhook, web webhooks are sent. So this webhook node. And then, of course, you know, depending on the, the, the bajillion different <laughs> um, options that we have, it, whether it's a, a user webhook, a ticket webhook, a session webhook, uh, creation of a call center, or creation of an expertise, you know, we're going to format the data um, and send it all to BigQuery. And then we use um, the execute workflow here to do all of the extra actions. So, for example, this is our bad feedback one. Here we have our user lists and our uh, user onboardings. Uh, this is also for bad feedbacks. Um, if you guys want, I can go a bit more uh, in detail uh, about how these work. And then we also report everything to Slack just to make sure that we uh, see everything that goes through and, and don't have any uh, specific errors. Um, if So this was uh, quite a big project, um, and it was actually co-developed with our tech team because I work on you know, the more of the business operations side and, and don't really um, have like my hands in the product. Um, and this was, you know, one of one of the things that was a bit more difficult when uh, when developing this workflow compared to many others, um, because you know having to uh, constantly exchange with the tech team made it a bit more uh, heavy and difficult to implement. Um, and we were a little bit less agile because I wasn't the only one working on the workflow. And every time there was uh, you know, something that was wrong with the webhooks or that's some more missing, we always had to ask um, for you know, specific changes. Um, some of the really cool points that, um, that this solution entailed were, well, first of all, we host NADN on our own servers. So we're not limited by you know, number of workflow executions. So um, an, an execution of the workflow every time an action happens wasn't really a problem for us. You know, we don't use NADN.cloud. 
And we also didn't have to authenticate to Vibe on a server that was not um, under our control. And it was also a real-time integration, which means that um, because of this, we're, we actually um, we can keep, if I can show you really quickly, we actually keep user lists in HubSpot. So for each one of our clients, we have a user list. So here's a user list, here's a user list, and they're updated in real time. And this means that you know, our customer success managers can easily see from HubSpot um, wh who our different clients are, what different accounts have been created, um, how many calls have been going on. You know, we constantly update all of our contacts in HubSpot with information from our product. And, um, and this also allowed, as I was explaining earlier, to you know, duplicate all of our data into Google BigQuery. Um, and then we use this to create uh, really complicated dashboards that we give access to uh, the whole team so that they can you know, analyze what's going on um, with our different clients. Um, I have a, two, two more minutes. Um, so this is what I wanted to talk about mainly today, but I actually want, did something yesterday that I thought was really cool and I wanted to share with you. Um, so in Google Sheets, there's a function called import data. And basically, import data mimics what a webhook, uh, like mimics a, a get webhook call. So what I did was I created um, a workflow that um, takes a user agent, calls user stacks um, API, and uh, parses the data that was uh, like from the user agent. And so the workflow looks something like this. So basically, here's webhook. We set the uh, set the query parameter, call the API, set the device browser, etc., and use the respond to webhook node to actually import the data back into Google Sheets. So this is actually a really cool way that you can integrate um, in a then two Google Sheets like instantaneously without having to set up uh, like complicated scripts or something like that. Um, basically, all you have to do is uh, set up the webhook node and then use a uh, string formula, something like this, and you can send data to N8N. And with the respond to webhook node, you can actually send it back to Google Sheets. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool and I wanted to share, to share with you guys today. Um, I think it has many, many different use cases. So um, I'd be happy to, uh, happy to learn more. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, I'd be, I'd be glad to, to answer them. And if not, thanks for, thanks for listening. And um, again, happy to be here.